Hello. I hope you're all enjoying the lovely sunshine. It's the perfect setting for the story that we're reading. This is The Butterfly Lion. It's chapter two. And this chapter is called A Strange Meeting. I was still deciding which direction to take when I heard a voice from behind me. Who are you? What do you want? I turned. Who are you? She asked again. The old lady who stood before me was no bigger than I was. She scrutinised me from under the shadow of her dripping straw hat. She had piercing dark eyes that I did not want to look into. I didn't think it would rain, she said, her voice gentler. Lost, are you? I said nothing. She had a dog on a leash at her side, a big dog. There was an ominous growl in his throat, and his hackles were up all along his back. She smiled. The dog says you're on private property, she went on, pointing her stick at me accusingly. She edged aside my raincoat with the end of her stick. Run away from that school, did you? Well, if there's anything like it used to be, I can't say I blame you. But we can't just stand here in the rain, can we? You'd better come inside. We'll give him some tea, shall we, Jack? Don't you worry about Jack. He's all bark and no bite. Looking at Jack... I found that hard to believe. I don't know if you can see my Kindle screen. There's a picture of the old lady standing at the gate of her house with her dog. I don't know why, but I never for one moment thought of running off. I often wondered later why I went with her so readily. I think it was because she expected me to, willed me to somehow. I followed the old lady and her dog up to the house which was huge, as huge as my school. It looked as if it had grown out of the ground. There was hardly a brick or a stone or a tile to be seen. The entire building was smothered in red creeper, and there were a dozen ivy-clad chimneys sprouting skywards from the roof. We sat down close to the stove in a vast vaulted kitchen. The kitchen's always the warmest place, she said, opening the oven door. I'll have you dry in no time. Scones, she went on, bending down with some difficulty and reaching inside. I always have scones on a Sunday, and tea to wash it down. All right for you. She went on chatting away, as she busied herself with the kettle and the teapot. The dog eyed me all the while from his basket, unblinking. I was just thinking, she said. You'll be the first young man I've had inside this house since Bertie. And she was silent for a while. The smell of the scones wafted through the kitchen. I ate three before I even touched my tea. They were sweet and crumbly and succulent with melting butter. She talked on merrily again to me and to the dog. I wasn't sure which. I wasn't really listening. I was looking out of the window behind her. The sun was bursting through the clouds and lighting the hillside. A perfect rainbow arched through the sky. But, miraculous though it was, it wasn't the rainbow that fascinated me. Somehow, the clouds were casting a strange shadow over the hillside. A shadow the shape of a lion, roaring like the one over the archway. Sun's coming out, said the old lady, offering me another scone. I took it eagerly. Always does, you know. It may be difficult to remember that sometimes, but there's always sun behind the clouds. And the clouds do go in the end, honestly. She watched me eat, a smile on her face that warmed me to the bone. Don't think I want you to go, because I don't. Nice to see a boy eat so well. Nice to have the company. But all the same, I'd better get you back to school after you've had your tea, hadn't I? You'll only be in trouble otherwise. Mustn't run off, you know. You've got to stick it out. See things through. Do what's got to be done. No matter what. She was looking out of the window as she spoke. My Bertie taught me that. Bless him. Or maybe I taught him. I can't remember now. And as she went on talking and talking, my mind was elsewhere again. The lion on the hillside was still there. But now he was blue and shimmering in the sunlight. It was as if he were breathing. As if he were alive. It wasn't a shadow anymore. No shadow is blue. 
No, you're not seeing things, the old lady whispered. It's magic. He's real enough. He's our lion. Bertie's, Bertie's mine. He's our butterfly lion. And there is a picture. Again, it's difficult to see. What do you mean, I asked. She looked at me long and hard. I'll tell you if you like, she said. Would you like to know? Would you really like to know? I nodded. Have another scone first and another cup of tea. Then I'll take you to Africa, where our lion came from. Where my Bertie came from too. Bit of a story I can tell you. Have you ever been to Africa? No, I replied. Well, you're going, she said. We're both going. Suddenly, I wasn't hungry anymore. All I wanted now was to hear her story. She sat back in her chair, gazing out of the window. She told it slowly, thinking before each sentence. And all the while, she never did take her eyes off the butterfly lion. And neither did I. It's the end of chapter two.